वेलकम टू द स्मार्ट इन्वेस्टिंग पॉडकास्ट ब्रॉट यू बाय मनी एंड मी एन इन्वेस्टर एजुकेशन एंड अवेयरनेस इनिशिएटिव बाय पीजीएम इंडिया म्यूचुअल फंड you know in the world of investing there are often those terms that you see literally everywhere but you're not 100% sure of what they actually mean and you know asset allocation i think that's one of those terms welcome to a brand new episode of smart investing by pjm india mutual fund where we talk about all things investing that you need to keep your eyes on and actually dive deeper into some concepts that uh, you might have heard of but may not know all the nuances of i'm ahalya and today we're doing a deep dive into the what how and why of asset allocation You know interestingly enough a study in 1986 titled Determinants of Portfolio Performance by Brinson Hood and B Bauer showed that asset allocation explains 93.6% of the variation in a portfolio's return. So that really points to the importance of following an asset allocation approach to investing rather than chasing only returns or the flavor of the season. So in today's episode personal finance expert Lisa Pallavi Barbora and Ravi Samalad from Pejam India Mutual Fund are going to be talking about what asset allocation really is the different types of asset allocation the benefits of this approach and what goes into making a diversified portfolio all this and more in the conversation to come Ravi Lisa over to you Thanks Ahalya and uh, welcome to the second episode of Smart Investing and good to have you back Lisa. So uh, today we're going to discuss about a very important topic uh, asset allocation which is really the building block when it comes to you know building your portfolio and uh, I can't think of a better example than uh, sharing the example of cricket you know when it comes to a uh, a uh, building a team you have a batsman bowler wicketkeeper which really creates a you know good and a diversified team so similarly in investing you need to have a good mix of assets such as equity debt gold commodities reits to really you know diversify your portfolio so uh, lisa let's start our conversation uh, with the most basic question you know what is asset allocation is it really a strategy or a solution if you can throw some light on it Hi Ravi thanks and uh, so happy to be back so it's true that asset allocation is talked about like you said everywhere when discussing uh, financial planning and yet when you hear the term it sounds like this you know far away state of perfection in personal financial affairs and that you have to achieve it you know have you got your asset allocation right it's it's almost scary but look whether you know it or not you are already partaking in some kind of asset allocation okay ravi let me ask you this do you have money in fixed deposits yes so uh, do you have money in equities maybe through mutual funds or directly yes both <laughs> equity and mutual funds and some gold yeah. of course <laughs> that's it your saving your money spread across these different kinds of investments right fixed deposits gold equity that is your asset allocation it's diversification of your investments into different assets nothing more than that it's not complicated so uh, what i understand is that uh, we all have some kind of asset allocation already in place but how does one go about you know building it in terms of uh, building your portfolio or you know asset allocation what what's exactly right for you now it's a well known fact that bank fixed deposits are a favorite for us indians immediately that forms a part of the debt or the fixed income portion of your uh, allocation there are some common assets that you know one can use for building an appropriate allocation so there's fixed income uh, which can be done through as i said fixed deposits or other fixed income assets like you know debt mutual funds equity where you are looking primarily for returns through capital gains then you have some dividend income also then there's real estate which is also a big part of you know the default allocation for indian investors where you earn through rental income and you hope for some kind of capital appreciation and then there is gold which is also uh, you know very much part of the indian household so these are four assets which are uh, very common in an asset allocation setting if your asset allocation has happened by default uh like say you have you know some accumulated provident fund money some jewelry some inherited property or shares etc and some sips uh, then you first need to understand what is this default 
asset allocation that already exists okay so make a note of all that calculate the value of all your holdings under these four asset classes that we spoke about do not make the common mistake of considering the house you live in as part of your asset real estate asset allocation because that is not an investment you are actually consuming that because you're living in it secondly don't forget to include things like your employees provident fund or epf which you don't really actively invest in it just gets deducted from your salary that is very much part of your fixed income allocation so don't forget that add up the market value of all the investments you have demarcate them into these four assets and then put a weight on each of it okay uh, so now say out of 100 rupees if you have 20 in fixed income uh, 50 in real estate 20 in equity 10 in gold then 20 50 20 10 is your existing asset allocation which is a step one for you to have a conscious understanding of what exists now you have to assess whether this allocation works for your future goals or not right uh, so this brings me to my next question whether this you know asset allocation really works for me you know personally because uh, you know different people have different life goals uh, some may have you know short term life goals and you know some may have long term goals so is there some kind of rule of thumb which people can follow perhaps if you ask me for a rule of thumb then this is what individuals can begin with for money that you need over the next six months to say two to three years you must consider capital safety as a requirement okay so you don't want to lose capital because you know how much money you will need you have good visibility and it may be a high priority that's why it's just six months away or two to three years away also you need a liquidity which means that you should be able to access this money as and when you need it at a short notice at the right market value or market price so you need capital safety and uh, liquidity for any money that you need soon investments in say real estate equity or even ppf which is a locked in product will not fit this bill right so you will not pick mm-hmm. those assets because they are volatile and they have lock ins etc real estate is not liquid uh, but bank fixed deposit short maturity debt mutual funds they'll be more relevant in this space now for money mm-hmm. that you say need in uh, you know 5 to 7 years you can consider balancing some amount of like capital safety because you will need some capital safety with some amount of growth now growth means like wealth creation so your money is actually growing you're not just bothered about keeping the capital safe uh, so then you need uh, you know investments like equity but here too you need some liquidity right you should be able to access the money say in a 3 to 4 year period so you may be looking at a combination of say deposits or hybrid or multi asset mutual funds which already have a mix of debt equity and gold lastly for anything that is longer term more than say 8 years 7 years you want your money to grow you want your money to beat inflation you want to create wealth now this comes from assets like equity which can be done directly or through mutual funds and real estate now real estate has different characteristics it has a different risk profile but essentially good quality investments in growth assets like equity and real estate can help you maximize wealth over the long term over decades so first you decide what you want your money to do for you right what are you hoping to achieve by investing your money then consider the assets which will fit this uh, need the best and whatever the result is whatever the outcome is yeah thanks lisa so what i understand is that essentially asset allocation is born out of the uh, life goals that i have but uh, i also have one more question is that uh, your life goals can change you know what is my life goal now it can change 15 20 years down the line so how do i incorporate this change in the portfolio yeah so you're buying on with this observation i mean sitting today creating an asset allocation for 20 years or 30 years later is a tough ask really you will have reasonable visibility of what you need say in the next 2 years or even 5 years you know things like travel budgets or down payment on a housing loan car loan uh, repairs in your home or you know even education costs even if they are slightly further away you do have visibility so you have a number and you have like a number of years also you have a value and a number of years for all these you can decide that and then pick the investment right um however when you come to long term goals beyond this it's you know prudent to invest all your surplus savings like whether monthly or lump sum into long term growth assets like we were talking about equity 
Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, equity does beat inflation, is tax efficient in the long run. And you can create wealth which is going to be useful in 10 years or 30 years later. So what you're doing is mm-hmm. you're not fixing that, you know, so what am I going to do in 20 years? The shorter term requirements you are fixing and then the longer term you're saying, let me invest in equity and it will grow, you know, whether it's 10 years or 30 years later. Right. Uh, so I understand that, you know, asset allocation is not static, uh, but what about change? You know, life is full of uncertainty. So how do I incorporate this uncertainty into my portfolio? Yeah, I mean, I think the pandemic definitely taught us that life is full of uncertainties and, you know, you may not have control over some of it either. So now say that, you know, you have done this exercise as we've spoken, you've figured out what is your default existing asset allocation. You've made those changes depending on what your near term goals are and you're you know, putting everything else in this kind of long term uh, growth assets. Say after two years, Ravi, your life circumstance yeah. changes. You may have a new job or you may be out of a job or you need to relocate to another country. You can then adjust your asset allocation accordingly. Unlike the idea or the thought, asset allocation is not a final destination. It's just an evolving Mm -hmm. journey based on your needs, wants, your life circumstances, which uh, also leads me to the, you know, realization that given, as you said, the dynamic life we lead today, a major portion of the money that you are allocating through different assets uh, and different products should be such that it can be liquidated fairly easily, meaning you can sell the asset fairly easily at market value and adjust for those changes that are coming up. And that's a really important consideration. You know, just as an example, there are so many cases of well-known personalities who have invested in, say, real estate or other illiquid assets across the globe. But when the pandemic hit, they realized that there is no liquidity and they needed it the most during the pandemic when, you know, for some time everything had stopped. So um, have to consider those things and you can keep your asset allocation pretty flexible, you know, barring the really near term goals that you are addressing. Right. So that's really a good example, you know, that you gave that, you know, real estate is not so liquid and people in India have this myth. They have invested in real estate. It will certainly grow, but they don't realize that there are so many costs associated with, you know, keeping the real estate investment and the kind of uh, liquidity and transparency also it does not bring, which brings me to the next question that we understand that asset allocation should be flexible and major portion of it should be, you know, liquid. But should it also cater to life goals? I mean, what if there is an investment opportunity which comes along that caters to, say, a return objective, like a there's a sudden market crash. So how do you, Mm. you know, incorporate this? So a smart way to approach this is to have a core asset allocation. What I mean by that is the allocation you absolutely need for all your identifiable goals, including a retirement kitty. Okay. now over time, as your income grows, you may find that you have surpluses beyond what you need for this core asset allocation. So you begin by catering to the core asset allocation and Over time, you'll realize that, okay, you are allocating as much of your investments to this as you need to. That's when you should start thinking about a tactical allocation into assets or investments, which may seem to be like the flavor of the season. You know, uh, a lot of people experimented even with bitcoins, but hopefully they didn't do it with their core allocation. And, you know, it could potentially multiply wealth. So usually because the goal here is to maximize return, as you were saying, the risk may be higher. However, you know, since this is not part of that core, absolutely necessary asset allocation, it's not unusual mm-hmm. that people will be okay with this additional risk. You know, bifurcating your asset allocation into a core or strategic allocation and tactical allocation can help you fill that gap around, you know, taking a kind of advantage of these opportunities that come up from time to time. Thanks, Lisa, for your, you know, detailed insights into the topic of asset allocation. And uh, I hope uh, our listeners have gained a clear understanding of what asset allocation is and how it can, you know, significantly 
impact their financial success and uh, we need to remember that there's no one size fits all approach to asset allocation and it should be really tailored to your individual financial goals risk tolerance and the time horizon and by diversifying your investments across various asset classes you can reduce the risk so whether you are saving for retirement planning for a major purchase or simply looking to grow your wealth effective asset allocation is the fundamental strategy to you know help you get there Well I think we've all got some really crucial insights you know especially the one about asset allocation being a conscious choice I never really thought about it that way and I'm sure many of you resonate uh, with that as well so that brings us to the end of this podcast smart investing episode 2 the what how and why of asset allocation Stay tuned to this series brought to you by Pejam India Mutual Fund because many more insights from the world of investing are sure to reach you through this series. For now this is me Ahalya signing off. Happy investing. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. You are listening to the Smart Investing podcast brought to you by Money and Me, an investor education and awareness initiative by Pejam India Mutual Fund. Money.